And welcome back to Just Wing It. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and RC model aviation enthusiasts all across the globe. What do we have today? Today we have a very special plane. This is the latest and greatest from our friends at Horizon Hobby and E-Flight. This is the new Beechcraft D18. It's a 1.5 meter, it's a 1.5 meter model, it's a twin, and it's beautiful looking. It really, really is. Now, I will want to admit, full disclosure, I am not a big fan or wasn't a big fan of this aircraft originally. Um, I, I know of it and I've seen it perform in various movies when I was a kid growing up most notably it's a mad 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 world where Mickey Rooney and Buddy Hackett and Jim Backus uh, Jim Backus plays a millionaire and Mickey Rooney and Buddy Hackett enlist him to help them get to uh, the big W to get them the money first and uh, it's just hilarious I can't recall there was Paul Mance or Frank Tallman uh, flying it so forgive me for that however uh, this aircraft in 1963 uh, was flown through a billboard, it was flown under a hangar, <laughs> I mean it's just really put through the ringer for the movie and, and it's just hilarious the scene uh, with uh, the aircraft doing a slow roll and Jim Backus's uh, unconscious body rolling along on the ceiling <laughs> in the background while Buddy Ack and Mickey Rooney are in panic. Um, anyway, so uh, a little bit of background on this aircraft. Uh, it came out, uh, it was developed in the late 1930s. Uh, the Beechcraft Corporation of Wichita, Kansas in the United States of America, uh, they developed it on their own. They, they thought that there was going to be a need for such an aircraft, and, and there was, right? So they, they saw the, the, the storm clouds building, they saw the writing on the wall, uh, and, and sure enough, the, war, the world descended into global warfare in, in 1941. Uh, of course, there was significant actions going on prior to that, 1940, 1939, etc. But by 1941, it, the world was pretty much engulfed uh, in, in war. They, uh, this aircraft was in continuous production uh, until the late 1960s, I believe. Uh, so over 30 years uh, was, was, was this aircraft produced. Um, and in pretty much the form you see here, twin radial engines, it was a tail dragger, a uh, crew of two, a pilot, co-pilot, could carry six to eight passengers. Uh, it was used during World War II as a light transport, as a, tra as a twin engine trainer, as a navigational trainer. Uh, our friends, Air America, <laughs> uh, used these things in the Vietnam War, doing whatever they did. Uh, but let's get busy with what we're going to do today today we're going to do a what's in the box slash kind of a quick assembly video I'm going to show you what she looks like when she's put together because it's not much of an assembly so let's get busy with the box and here it is okay this is what you're going to find uh, inside I've already taken the liberty to, to, to take the tape off um, which is why it looks like Freddy Krueger uh, had his way <laughs> with that but as you can see uh, it's very nicely packed. There's the ca there's the canopy, if you will. Here's the front of the aircraft, and it's just beautiful. It's silky smooth. Uh, there's the tail. It has rudder control, twin twin rudders. The center part of the wing it, it comes assembled. So you have the 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 uh, ESC. You have the uh, receiver, um, and then you have the the engine or the motors rather, right? So you got the motors, uh, and what happens is the wing, the outer wing panels will then go into here, okay? So pretty straightforward, uh, there's your wing spars, um, and there's your accessory packet right there. There's like practically nothing in there. The, this model, I'm being told by a buddy of mine, uh, Adam from uh, Model Aviator, said so this thing goes together with like six screws. So in any event, um, there it is. Uh, there's the plane, so I'll tell you what. I'm going to go ahead and get everything out of the box and lay it out here for you to see. We're going to go over it one by one, show you what comes uh, inside the, this uh, packaging. And, uh, and then I'll go ahead and get the thing uh, put together. And we'll show you what she looks like when it's all said and done. But so far, very impressive. Oh, one more thing I want to add to before we uh, 
get the parts out. This is actually a result of, of believe it or not, of, of customer input to eFlight. What am I talking about? So for the last, I don't know, three, four years or so, there's been a very loud um, and, and, and uh, uh, cantankerous bunch in RC groups on the Horizon Hobbies threads you know, what's new for 22, what's new for 21, what's new, etc., etc., etc. And they've always been asking for a Beach 18. Where's our twin beach? Where's our Beach 18? Boy, we sure would go for a Beach 18. Well, guess what? Horizon Hobby and E-Flight delivered. Delivered. Just like they did with the UMX Wildcat, and there's even some other models that they've done this with. So... Bottom line up front, I do want to give great kudos to the persistence and the, the prodding by the RC groups uh, folks uh, through the years. I mean, probably going back four years. And an even bigger kudos to Horizon Hobbies, to, to Jason Merkel, to Matt Andron, to Craig Greening, to Ali Machinci, to the whole gang over there for taking the chance and actually doing this. This thing looks beautiful. So, again... Uh, that said, let's go ahead and get all these parts out of the uh, styrofoam packaging and get it all laid out here for, for, for you to see. We will be right back, or BRB, as they say on the interwebs. Be right back. And welcome back to Just Wing It. And we are back with the Horizon Hobbies E-Flight Beechcraft D18. It's a 1.5 meter rendition of the classic. This is the result of a of a, well, I don't say collaboration, but this is the result of of a very a long time, a number of years of requests by uh, folks in RC groups. At least four years that I remember, because I've seen it. So on the you know what's new for Horizon, you know uh, all the rest of it on those threads. Um, I've seen it, and they've been pestering Horizon for at least four years, I would say. And uh, where's my Beechcraft? And sure enough, here it is. So Horizon listened, E-Flight delivered, and what a gem. I'll tell you what, when I looked, and I've got the box tilted because I don't want it to fall on the, the, the model. When I looked at the box, the box, uh, the model, you can see the box is some Gatoring. And uh, I was hoping that that wouldn't be the case. Uh, and uh, sure enough, this that that's probably gatored a bit because it's a demo plane, right? So goodness knows how many times that was flying around uh, there in Champaign, Illinois, you know, doing la loops or rather doing laps or around uh, Eli Field, their horizon. But sure enough, uh, you get the model out of the box, and it is just the finish is just stunning. I'm telling you, uh, the uh, simulated Pratt and Whitney uh, uh, decal or decal for our friends uh, there in the UK. Uh, these radials, simulated radials, just look beautiful. They look absolutely gorgeous. And by the way, I really do like this uh, period trim scheme. Just stunning on that airplane. Just stunning. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, let's continue on down. I think the prop is a 95 by 75 prop. So really, it's very similar to what you would see on the uh, the T28 Trojan, believe it or not, has 9575. So, uh, and these uh, both, they're counter-rotating and they rotate in. Okay? So they're ro counter-rotating and they rotate in. So if you have a motor out or what have you, then you should be good to go, although I, that seldom happens with electrics. But this, uh, the, the, the horizontal and the, uh, the vertical is just stunning. It really, really is. I want to show you something here, though. So the rudders are hinged, okay? The rudders are hinged. Um, and you can see that a little bit there as I... So I move that, and there's a connecting rod here in the center, which gives them both their action. Okay, so that connecting rod is going to go into a a uh, part here in the back of the fuse, right? Yeah, there you go. It's going to go right in there, 
that connecting rod will go right in there and then this will control your your rudders okay one thing I do want to say too as I look over the model we'll cover these pieces in turn um, let me get back to the main wing though because I just said in turn I want to make sure we do that um, I've noticed some things about this model that uh, again look at that look at that it's just stunning right it really is just a good looking plane smooth no gatoring yet so <laughs> so let's look at the wing all right shall we so you have a, a smart e, uh, avion esc it's a 40 amp esc it's 3s 4s compatible call it the avion light or avian light it has the smart uh, battery connector okay your uh, your uh, receiver is already in there it's already plugged in it's all set ready to rock and roll it's an AR 631 it's a smart receiver it's a safe type receiver however um, I am not going to be binding this model with the uh, with the safe okay there's a certain way that you bind it with either AS 3x only or safe select I will bind this model for safe or correction for AS 3x only I do not use safe um, and and uh, since this model is is sp specifically designed, it's funny because they say it's a scale airplane for intermediate to experienced pilots. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm just not going to go with safe on it, okay? But we will show you how she handles. Uh, we will show you how she handles flight a wide flight envelope. We're going to start her off on a 3S, probably a 3S 3200 or something like that. So there's your wing. That's your central wing component, right? Um, and they have these nice little quick plugs. So the outer wings here, for example, will have these uh, quick plugs and these little snappy facet things, okay? So they will, those little plastic doohickeys, that's the uh, scientific word, doohickeys will actually snap into here and of course your wing spar, your outer spar of which there are two in the package will just slide right in there see if we can do this without marring the finish there we go alright so yeah so the spar will will go in there and uh, there it goes start to slide in now okay there you go great so yeah, so that spar will slide in and out. Um, so I, that's great because I don't have a lot of room in my car. I drive a smaller car. So it'll be nice to be able to take those outer wing panels off, put the plane assembled for the most part into the car, get it to the flying field, you know, take five minutes to put the wing tips on and, and away you go, okay? Uh, there's the flaps and they're all beautiful. And there's the retracts. Okay, there's the flaps and there's the retracts. So beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, one thing I wanted to talk about too, this is all the markings of an earlier Horizon Hobbies model, like, like the, the manufacturer that you did all of their earlier models, right? Look at that, look at that clevis. Um, look at that keeper, the retainer pin, the, the grommet. Look at the two, uh, the two screws on opposite ends. Oh yeah, I'm digging this. I'm digging this because, and I don't want to damage anything. It's kind of hard doing it one-handed. I'm digging this because I'm seeing that, and I'm going. You know what? When I look at, uh, when I look at that, I go, yeah, boy, that um, that has has a look of an older. The older company that did all their park zone planes, like the Wildcat, the, the T6 Texan, which we know was not a, a park zone aircraft. However, um, it was done by the same company. I believe it was because of these sorts of hardware and features that I'm seeing. Plus, this finish is just beautiful and it's just right. It's just right because it's, it's not too shiny. And it's it's not too dull. It's just right because this is not a natural finish. This is actually a painted silver, so uh, it's just beautiful. So there's your wing your your wing tips, um, and again the the wing tip, those little plastic keepers, 
they just go in like so see that see that and uh, away you go okay and don't forget the spar <laughs> and, I, and don't worry I won't but uh, in any event let's keep going shall we here's your accessory package um, there's nothing to it now I'll tell you this there's like six screws in there there they are uh, positive tip screws so they're Phillips head screws as we call them here in the US I don't know what you call them overseas but they're Phillips head screws and I'll also say this and there's of course your bind plug right got your bind plug this little doohickey right here is an adjustment uh, tool that goes in the back part of the fuse okay so even with the 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 recommended battery and here of course is your your manual right so even with the recommended battery um, it's still probably a bit uh, I don't want to say tail heavy I really don't want to say tail heavy but um, let me find it here in the manual let's see if I can find it oh it's right here duh <laughs> duh okay so it's called the elevator control surface centering update and you use this little wooden doohickey technical term and you, you put it on the back part of the fuse which is right chien, and you induce you adjust in a little bit of down elevator okay they want you to induce a little bit of down elevator make sure you have safe turned off AS reacts etc okay um, by the way uh, for those who say, well, gee, that must be a fault of the design and, and all the rest of it, I don't know about all that. But what I do know is this. The Twin Otter was the same way. I had to do that with the Twin Otter, and I really didn't care for it. And I tried flying it without that up elevator, or correction, the down elevator. Uh, and it didn't fly very well until I actually put that in. So there you go. Okay, enough of that. Here is your, your canopy. Um, the pilot looks a bit scary. That's all right. <laughs> It's, it's a good looking pilot, whatever. Um, and uh, they have a rudimentary, they have a very, very, very rudimentary uh, cockpit in there. There is no instrumentation that I can see uh, in there. But uh, hey, I like the uh, the aerial. It's very nice. It's, it's plastic. It is a, is a scale uh, component. This is all plastic, okay? And there's a plastic keeper right there, right there. And uh, that plastic keeper has a very nice little button right here. So you can see that part as I'm pushing down this button. That allows the canopy, the back part, to latch into place. Now I'm not going to do that because as you can clearly see, I am one-handed. Let's get to the fuselage. Okay, so I like this little ADF doohickey. That's plastic as well, scale accessory. Uh, we go to the back, we've already talked about how the, the rudder linkage actually works. Your tail wheel is already there. And I'll also say this, that also, to me, has some of the markings of the earlier Horizon Hobby models, uh, the Wildcat, T6 Texan, T28 Trojan, all the rest of it. And there ain't nothing wrong with that because those are some of my favorite models. So I'm glad to see the company. I think it's the same company or same contractor that did this, that did all their earlier planes. Now let's look at what's going on in here. So we have, and this surprised me. Uh, I'm going to try zooming in here real quick. Oops, without going too far. Let me unzoom. Forgive me on that. I'm trying to show you. They're 14 gram servos. Look at that. 14 gram uh, Alpha 6, looks like, correction, 382s. A382 servos, I believe. So in any event, uh, just super neat. Now this is where the, the wing will plug in. And that device right there will plug in and give these servos power, right? So this plugs into the center part of the wing, which is right on oh here, and uh, plug right into here. There's guide posts, and then the, the plugs will go in. So make sure that everything's out of the way when you do it, right? Make sure stuff's out of the way. 
and uh, that's what gets the power, okay, from the ESC and from the uh, receiver to uh, control these servos that are here in this part of the aircraft. Now, let's look at some neat features. So I can tell already, I've got carbon fiber or carbon rod going deep into the nose. I mean, at least to probably here. I mean, it's that's really cool. So that carbon or that that reinforcement goes all the way. And it's on both sides. And it goes to probably, I'd say about here or so. I don't know. But it, it looks like it goes in fairly deep into the nose. So, so Horizon had some forward thinking. And they strengthened this part of the model. So kudos again to Horizon. Uh, they have really done a good job. And again, I, I don't want to gush too much. But uh, again, I'm really liking that. That clevis... And that attachment with that little rubber uh, piece of, of silicone tubing, yeah, that 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 right there, and you all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all old Horizon people, you all know what I'm talking about. That 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 right there looks like old Horizon hobbies, and I'm digging it. Notice they're not even ball links. I love that. I don't like ball links. This plane doesn't need them. Doesn't need them. And I think actually it's kind of a gimmick, really, because if if it's a metal ball link, then yeah, okay, because it won't really wear out that much. If it's some plastic or nylon, it'll probably wear, I don't know. I'm just talking, but they don't do anything for me. So, uh, you know, those ball links, and they're a pain in the you-know-what. Uh, but again, these, these propellers are 9575s, and they rotate in. They rotate in, okay? So we have some uh, counter-rotating props going on. We have a beautiful, strong center part of the wing I love the uh, the uh, the rudders and the uh, the uh, uh, horizontal that looks like it's held on by two of the uh, screws this looks like it's held on by four of the screws oh and another thing I wanted to show you so there's there's a total of six screws right now I'm counting and and that's it and look and we have brass uh, we have brass keepers, right, or brass screws where the screws screw into, okay? So very good on that. And again, th these are the, the, the locating pins and the, the servo leads for these, these uh, massive 14 gram servos uh, that, are, that are in this model, okay? And that's going to be for your elevator and for your rudder. So you, you know you got 14 gram servos on the elevator and the rudder so you can only imagine you probably have the same on the ailerons and on the flaps and yes this aircraft does have the flaps as we pointed out earlier and there's that 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 kick butt landing gear okay all right well hey i think uh that covers it so uh, i think this video is already kind of kind of longish a little bit longer than i wanted to make make at least this part of it anyways so uh in any event I'll tell you what, I'll put that there. But, uh, yeah, so what we're going to do now is we're going to get this put together. We're going to get all this stuff put together for you and uh, get her bound up, show you how the, the parts work, um, and we'll go from there. So, hey, uh, stay tuned, and we will be right back, and this plane will magically be assembled, okay? This plane will magically be assembled and this pilot will be able to take flight in his Beechcraft. Be right back. And welcome back. Welcome back. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and RC model aviation enthusiasts all across the globe. We are back with the fully assembled uh, E-Flight Beechcraft D-18 and what a looker what a stunner I'll tell you what this thing down to the uh, simulated Pratt & Whitney uh, decals or decals to the, the period correct uh, markings I just really really Matt Andron you done good you done good, I'll tell you what. 
So yeah, the, the our friends at Horizon Hobby were pestered by <laughs> a vociferous and active group on RC groups for years. Probably about four years, I guess. I don't know. And uh, yeah, they said, where's our beach craft? Let's do a beach 18, huh? And you know what? Horizon did. They, they surprised everybody. They did it. All right. So it's put together. It took a whopping uh, six screws. Um, and I'll tell you what. Uh, it is a looker. It is a looker. Um, there was four screws on the main wing, two screws on the horizontal and the verticals. And uh, this is what we have left. We have the bind plug. We have... Uh, a, one screw a piece of one one of the uh, mains and then one of the tail and I used this little screwdriver right chill on the airplane um, this is the uh, addendum set addendum uh, paperwork that shows that they want you to use this wooden cutout to get the proper incidence of a little bit of down elevator. Now, uh, it's interesting to note, by the way, I've set my DX6 up as per the call outs in this manual. For the flaps, uh, they want an additional 4% or 4 degrees down when you're at the first setting, and then you need to go to 7 degrees. I, I set everything up as per the manual. I want to show you this. So, you lift up the tail. Let's see if I can get this here without. Uh, let me see here. Aha! There we go. Okay. So this this goes in right there. As you can see, it uh, it's it's perfect. It's perfectly set up from the factory. So they actually they said that in the manual that if and and in this addendum that if there is not sufficient down elevator as per this plywood, this light ply tool to go ahead and put it in. But I'll tell you what, uh, typical for Horizon Hobby, I mean everything is, is perfect. Everything is perfect out of the box. I didn't have to adjust anything. I mean, really. So, I, well, I, I take that back. I had to adjust the left, the pilot's, or rather the left flap, the port side flap. I had to bring it down like one screw of the clevis adjuster to make it flush with the aileron. So the aileron, you make sure the aileron's flush with the wingtip. You go on down, you make sure it's flush with that flap and the flap. Okay, so this is all factory. I didn't have to do anything with this. Um, come over here and I didn't have to do anything with this it's nice and flush but again I did have to adjust the aileron incidence to make sure that we were good to go there okay alright but hey the fit and the finish on this model is just there are some pop outs some little star pop outs here and there um, I'll tell you this too I've got a 3 cell 3200 in there one of those sort of longer, little flatter batteries. I think you all are familiar with them. It's got EC3s. It's a little old. It's from the Trust series of batteries they had. Horizon had a long time ago. Well, I say a long time ago. Probably right before they came out with Smart. And it fits in there. I've got it all the way to the front. And what the manual says is to use this line right where the wings come together to use this panel line as your CG mark right and it says to check your CG inverted and and with the gear retracted so I did it's a lot easier to see right here the manual calls to check the CG approximately right here it's interesting that they want you to check it so far out right but right here not you know normally it would be somewhere up here from the front leading edge normally right back but with this model, they want you to check it right where the wings come together and this panel line. And with that 3200 battery in there, this thing is slightly, ever so slightly, uh, nose heavy. Okay?
but again it's just a looker it really is an absolutely stunning model um, Horizon did did an absolute number on this I'll tell you what so let's show you some of the features um, so you have the the, the the rudders left right okay then you have your elevator up down okay and of course our ailerons uh, rather ailerons left right okay there you go okay now let's look at the flaps okay so the manual on a DX6 calls for you to put them on the D switch which is this three position switch right here right here my landing gear is set right here and no I'm not gonna I go up and that will retract the landing gear and I keep my landing gear down it's very simple for me that's down that's up okay not gonna show it to you right now because the plane will collapse onto the bed okay but let's show you the flaps okay so here we go so there's my first setting and this is as per the call outs in the manual there's your first setting of flat and um, now we have the AS3X I wanted to make sure the AS3X is going and there's your your uh, full flap okay full flap so there's full flap half flap no flap alright and we'll show you from this angle all right, so we have half flap, and there's your full flap deflection, and I have it set up exactly per the manual, okay? Um, so yeah, it's really, really, really a neat model. Uh, there's limited lighting on it. You have your, your port side red, your landing light, starboard side green, okay? Uh, Notice that that motor spins in, motor spins in. There you go. All right, looking good. Okay, beautiful. Um, so in any event, hey, I just wanted to show this to you. Um, I'm excited, man. I don't know if you can hear my voice, but I'm a, I'm kind of trembling a little bit, like a school kid. <laughs> I mean, this is awesome. So they give you this neat little e-flight sticker, I guess it is. You get your addendum. You get your little wooden doohickey to check your elevator. I found that my angle of incidence is actually preset from the factory. As are most of my controls, the only control I had to fiddle with was my, my port side or left flap. That's it. That's it. But look at this. Look at this. So it's beautiful. There's two screws that go in right here, and they're self-tapping actually, so they're pointed tips. The screws themselves are cross tips, so the Phillips head screws. The, the, the tip of the screw that bites in is, is called self-tapping, so they're pointed tip. They go in there into the tail, and then underneath the wing, you flip the model upside down. I, I laid it on that pillow with my little... Uh, army type towel there <laughs> so I laid it on that pillow right here in the center part of the bed I flipped the model over and I put the the four screws in went right and I had you have to work it a little bit I will tell you this these are real snug when you slide the the wing tips on there's these little keepers that I showed you earlier that they they squeeze together and they snap in and you'll hear them both there's one about here one about here you have your spar and they're quick connects and you you really gotta just be careful that when you when you push it in I, I kinda just you know I was trying to be really careful I don't want to dent the foam so I don't know how you want to work that yourselves but figure it out uh, in such a way where you don't dent the foam okay so let's go ahead and let's see if we can darken it ever so slightly and show you what some of these these lights look like all right there you go so I still have the ambient light coming in from my outside but yeah not bad not bad all right well hey um, in true just wing it fashion we're gonna go ahead and get her uh, get her in the air here uh, in the next couple of days um, 
So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna show you. Let me uh, get this light. There we are. So we're gonna show you uh, how she does in the skies above the Mojave Desert. So again, uh, thank you much for checking this out. Um, we are just winging it as we always do. Uh, so we showed you basically a look at what's inside the box, how it's packaged. We showed you all the parts laid out. And now you get to see her in all of her glory. Um, and again, with all of the parts uh, working. Okay, we showed you the demonstration of the control surfaces, etc. And again, with a three cell, 3200 uh, battery, all the way front, it, it balanced very easily right where they want, right where Horizon calls out to balance it. Okay, it balanced very easily. In fact, it's probably a little nose heavy, so I'm going to do probably slide the battery back just a smidge for the Maiden. Not much. I prefer my models a little nose heavy, but for Maidens and adjust from there. But here's the trick. Since this model already has a little down elevator uh, <clears throat> mechanically put in, you know, I'm not really sure I want the model nose heavy. <laughs> I'll probably have a hard time uh, lifting, if you know what I'm saying. The tail will come up, but then I might have to give it a little bit more throttle and be a little bit more aggressive with the elevator to get her to unstick. And I'm not sure I want to do that. Even though, even on the maiden flight, I'm still going to go with uh, half flap. Then I'll bring her, when I bring her in, I'll, I'll go half flap and down all the way down to full flap because I like flying with flaps. But anyway. I uh, hope you enjoyed this look at the new E-Flight uh, Beechcraft D18. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Maiden flight coming up soon. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell so when you know when more great videos of this plane are appearing and uh, more videos from the fly-ins that I go to. There's a lot more coverage of St. George. And there's another flying I'll be going to here shortly. Got a lot of videos out there. So, hey, thanks for watching, everybody. Cheers. Blue skies. All the best. Happy landings from Just Wing It. We're here with the new E-Flight Beechcraft D18. Cheers, everyone.